Hello everyone and welcome back in. Well, we've made it up to episode number five of the FT-17 and that is the little big giant tank 1 16th scale. In this episode, we'll finish out the vehicle and we'll work on a diorama base. Yes, a big diorama base at 1 16th scale. Or will we? Dun dun dun. Yep, there's some drama coming up. So we'll save that towards the end of the video. In the meantime, let's get started and finish up this model. We are really down to the final details here. This is the skid on the rear of the vehicle to help it untrench itself if it should happen to fall into some sort of shell hole or trench. And if you remember in the very first episode, I added hairspray and it hadn't worked out very well up to this point, but yep, on the skid, I tried it one more time and I got perfect results or more or less perfect results here. So remove some of the paint, especially in the high abrasion areas using the hairspray method and then coming back in with just some oil paints to add some discoloration. Of course, we'll add the rest of the weathering here, the pigments and things like that ongoing as we complete the rest of the model. Well, let's move up to the turret. This is basically the only area of the model that I haven't really addressed yet. And of course, we've worked on the lower hull, the running gear, even the engine deck in prior episodes. So we'll just catch up a little bit on this turret here. Weathering is going to be a little on the subtle side, as, especially as compared to the lower hull. First thing I do is just kind of bring out some of the details using the oil paints. So adding some discoloration in some of the recesses around some of the surface details and including using the oil paints as small chips. I find this to be a very effective method if you just put a just a touch of oils at the tip of your brush, it leaves just a very small deposit. Of course, there's regular discoloration of the surfaces as well as we did earlier with the camouflage, adding greens over greens, yellows over the yellows, things like that. And in this case, if we add a little bit of the greens, say on these areas that have been already weathered with a lighter color, well, that gives the illusion of maybe some wear, some scuffing, some cleaning even by the crew, in this case, the commander, as he's moving in and out of the vehicle on this rear hatch. As is the method application is adding the color first and then coming back with a clean soft brush and working that color into the surface. When I do this type of work, I generally work color by color, meaning in, especially something like this where the camouflage pattern is so large, I can go do all the greens in one, one sitting, maybe come back later on and I'll work on the yellows as I'm doing in this case. The colors I'm using for the yellow patches tend to be yellow ochres, uh, more vibrant yellows to really make it pop. I might add a little bit of white into the mix at time to time to add some more faded effects. And just working those into the surface and coming back and blending it with the soft brush and the end result is you get these patterns of traffic, you get little blemishes here and there. Um, it's a really effective method. In this case, I decided to go ahead and add those colors with the oils first. You could do this in an opposite manner if you'd like to as well, adding the acrylics first and then back with the oils. But in this case, I wanted to start out with the chipping and the color variations using the oils to kind of set the tone. And now I do want to add some chipping. Of course, I'm doing this the old fashioned way because, well, we, <laughs> we're not being very successful with the hairspray chipping on these upper areas. So a fine brush, finding those acrylic colors that match the real colors that I use for the base coats, the base colors, and just adding some very small chipping. I'm not, a, not heavily chipping this, just trying to show some wear, some scuffs of paint, especially in the camouflage areas where it will take the camouflage paint off and back down to the base yellow color. And this probably seems like a lot of going back and forth for no apparent reason, but it really does have a reason. So I've added those acrylic chips, and now they, they sit very brightly. They, they 
almost sparkle onto the surface. And, and that's not really the look I want. I want these chips and scuffs to be integrated into the finish. So just a light application of oil colors, generally in those areas where I've just now applied those chips, just softens their appearance a bit and integrates them within the surface instead of them having just appear to be on top of the surface. Couple more details here just at the rear of the vehicle. And oh yeah, look at that. Another look at my engine. Yes, like I said, I left the hatches so they can be opened so we can always go back and take a look at the work we've done earlier on. So it wasn't all in vain. It's still there and we could still look at it. This is my brief moment where I get to say thank you to my Patreon. If you enjoy this channel and would like to support it further, I do have a Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Over on Patreon, early viewing of these videos, special feature Patreon-only videos, photographs of these projects as they're ongoing, a Discord server for chat. I do hope you consider supporting this channel and checking out the Patreon page. Last of the final details, we'll come back to these tracks. I have some dark steel pigment, just a little bit on my finger there. And we'll just kind of burnish up, polish up some of those edges just to give that appearance of, of metal and steel on those tracks. Well, I purposely called this chapter two because this story has a very twisted end to it. So here we go. We're going to start working on a diorama base for the model. Yes, 1 16th scale. It's going to be a huge diorama. I even have a figure that I've worked on that I can, I may include into the scene as well. At this point, I'm just mocking up the scene. Yep, my official way of using just scraps, pieces of foam, even pigment bottles just to try to figure out the elevation and get a sense of the scene and how I want it to look. First step, let's cut some foam. We'll need quite a bit of it. I went to the hardware store, got a couple more sheets of this, and now I need to cut it down into smaller pieces that I can use for the base. And now based on my very high-tech uh, mock-ups with the scraps and the pigment bottles, we start putting together the scene using the cut pieces of foam. The basic idea for this scene is really very, very simple. It's a this, this tank has stumbled into a trench or a shell crater and become stuck or disabled down there. Trying to find a dramatic angle, dramatic pose, real nose down, tail up sort of a situation. Well, it does take some time, that's for sure, but block by block, test fit by test fit, the scene does start to come to life a bit. We can start to, at least I can start to visualize it here. Um, and I think the pose is good. I think it definitely has that drama to it that I'm looking for. So far, so good. Oh, and here's our figure. He's going to be sitting up here on the edge of the scene. I think I, I, think I will use him, uh, and he'll just kind of look down and kind of help set a sense of scale as well. I now have the basic elevations in place, but I do have all these steps, so I need to try to blend all this together. I'm going to go back to my tried and true here, plaster and paper. This is quick, it's easy, it's durable, and it's inexpensive. Well, let's try one more test fit now that we have our plaster. And we can see that it's starting to get the model, the vehicle is really starting to become integrated into the scene. It's at this point that I'm starting to feel the overwhelming nature of the size of this project. Yes, it's huge, it's big. And I don't necessarily have a end vision in mind. Yeah, a shell hole or crater, a trench, something like that. But I continue on. Here's the Sculpey, and this will start adding some of these finer details to the base. So I now I can start tucking, say, the tracks here into the scene and really locking things into place. I'm at about this point and I decide that let's move towards a trench rather than say a shell hole or shell crater. So I've cut back some of the elevations a bit to make it more trench-like, trenchy-like, uh, to give it harder edges. And then I've once again gone to the craft store and I'm going to build up some of the, the walls, the, what do you call those, supports. So I've got some sticks, basically popsicle sticks here. And they're, they're good, but they're not quite perfect. So I'm going to want to rough those up a bit and make those a little bit more even. So we'll take a handful of these, cut off some of these edges, use the, my knife to add some extra wood grain, 
And pretty soon we have a pile of wood sticks. Now let's start working on some of these retaining walls. I've got some doweling, and of course I have my popsicle sticks. And it's at this moment that I ran out of gas. Yep, I absolutely ran out of gas on this project or on this base. To be quite honest, it's just too big. I, in order to do this justice, in order to make a scene of this size and do it justice, it would take me a couple of months. And I just don't have the time nor patience to do that. Nor do I have the, the uh, space to display something like that, even if I did get it finished. So I've abandoned the base. What we're left is with the vehicle itself. The FT-17, here it is, it is finished. And now you're looking at shots of that. For those of you expecting to see a full base, I apologize. Sometimes modeling is like that. You just change course and you go with the flow as it happens. Um, I, I generally build a model no matter what from start to finish. There's no unfinished models on my shelf at all. No shelf queens ready to be painted or anything like that. But in terms of this base, I gave myself permission to go ahead and pull back. I want to do more videos. There's more subjects I want to cover. And like I said, quite frankly, it was going to take me forever to get that project done in a, in a good manner and to be presentable to the standard that I wanted to try to do it. So like I said, I gave myself permission. We're moving on. In terms of the FT-17, a blast to do. A wonderful kit. Had a great time building it. It's been a lot of fun. I learned a lot along the way. There's quite a few differences between moving from the smaller 135th scale up until something of 116th scale. That was a bit of a challenge in the beginning, but I think I've learned a lot that I would like to try now incorporate back into the smaller scales, especially in terms of working with texture and color and things like that. I hope you enjoyed this series. It's been a blast for me. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like and subscribe. Hit that little bell for notifications on the premieres as these videos come due. If you would like to support this channel further, I do have that Patreon page. The link for that is in the description below. I hope to see you over there as well. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon on the next project.